Bamford Rose and another question of the week. This week it's a few tips about purchasing a classic Vanquish. This classic Vanquish S is for sale on our portal. Here's the ad, go check it out. At 100k this Vanquish S represents a great purchase and obviously because it's been given the once over by us and we've actually done some work on this car then it really really is a top buy. The Vanquish can be a bit troublesome in the workshop which means buying the right car with the right works done is really really important. Before we get into that detail let's go for a drive in this Vanquish and remind ourselves why it's so intoxicating. <laughs> So buying any Aston really does need some careful consideration. Obviously best to do a pre-purchase inspection or buy from franchise dealer and know that their after sales should cover you for anything that goes wrong in your ownership. But with classic Vanquish that applies even more so. The parts are super expensive for classic Vanquish. They're complex to work on and there aren't many garages that can competently work on them. And even the simplest jobs can take quite a long time, so labour prices can be quite high. The market changes quite frequently. I mean, the cutoff between a non-S and an S seems to be at about 80, 85K at the moment, with good S's running to about 120K. Probably on average, they sit around the 90 to 100K mark at the moment. Entry level non-S seems to trade for about 50. Most seem to be sat around the 65 to 75K area. And if you want my advice, I'll be looking at buying a classic Vanquish, either from a franchise dealer or a recognized brand specialist. I definitely would not be advising buying a classic Vanquish from a non brand recognized specialist. Maybe a car for sale at a non-recognized Aston brand specialist is okay. It's just I think that's too much of a risk in the case of Classic Vanquish because you'll be relying on their after sales, their warranty policy to take care of anything which shortly into your ownership becomes problematic. That's likely to be a generic policy from a third party supplier and it's quite surprising these days the amount of stuff that just isn't covered. So you might buy a car with a nice brochure, a nice looking warranty policy document, but in reality it's not going to cover you for the sorts of things that go wrong on Vanquish. So getting a pre-purchase inspection done is pretty tricky. On classic Vanquish you have to take off all the under surface trays. Now most of the time the fixings, or some of them at least, are stripped and we've got to break them to remove them. So if you're doing a pre-purchase inspection, that's quite difficult because you're taking under surface trays off, but you're not able to put them back on again, or at least you're not able to put them on unless you re-engineer the fixings, which goes beyond the pre-purchase inspection. Most garages are pretty awkward about allowing someone else into their garage to do a pre-purchase inspection. I don't know why, you know, if everyone is being transparent about the sale, then they should welcome it. But I had an interesting conversation with a client the other day about how we could potentially get around this. If the car is quite a journey away from us, then we have to send a technician out to the garage where the car is located do the inspection, so with inspection costs, travel costs, that can all mount up to quite a significant sum. So the novel approach I suggested, and this is especially possible when buying from a recognized independent specialist or franchise dealer, is that you ask them to become a customer of theirs. You ask them, separate from the sale, to perform some work for you. That work is a pre-purchase inspection. They're probably going to charge about £300 for that. And then when the car is brought to us quite soon after sale, and we do a post-purchase inspection, the two reports should marry up. Now, if their pre-purchase inspection was 300 quid, our post-purchase inspection is 300 quid, that 600 quid is going to be about the cost of our 
travel expenses and the inspection report. Now, if somebody was selling a car completely transparent to start with, then you wouldn't have to ask them for a pre-purchase inspection of the car on their own forecourt. But together with the philosophy of our sales portal, this is really identifying that used cars are being sold, either with known problems, or if the problems are not known about, it's because A, they didn't do an inspection to uncover them, or B, they know about them, but they just want to brush them under the carpet and then see if they get away with it in after sales. So if you're interested in a car on their forecourt, then ask to become a customer of theirs. Ask them for them to do a pre-purchase inspection for you. Really important on Classic Vanquish if the mileage is above 20K because above that mileage, then you really need to see receipts for certain work that's been done in the past to evolve and maintain the car. Specifically, we'll be talking about the ASM pump. Has that been renewed? Has the ASM pack had a rebuild? Has the clutch been renewed? What type of gearbox position sensor is fitted? If it's a non-S, has that been evolved to the magnetic position sensor? If it's an S, has that been renewed recently? Is the engine free from misfire? And if you've got a written statement on all of those, with the pre-purchase inspection that you ask them to do, which is gonna take into measurement, brakes, tires, and consumables, then that's a written report from that seller on that car's status. Then bring the car to us shortly after sales, and with all of those pertinent things that I just mentioned and a few other things that we normally check for, then our post-purchase inspection should marry up precisely with that pre-purchase inspection you asked the vendor to do, but you've asked the vendor to do it as you're their client, you're paying for a specific piece of work to analyze a car they just happen to have on their own forecourt. Because of the frequency stuff is brushed under the carpet and then cars are sold with problems, and because the cost of fixing those is so high, then that's the lengths that you have to go to to protect yourself, unfortunately. If used car salesmen were honest people, then we wouldn't have to go to those lengths. So it's not necessarily the cars that are at fault. It's not because the cars are troublesome and they need checking. It's because you can't trust used car salesmen as far as you could kick them. Now that approach, getting a franchise dealer or brand recognized specialist to do their own pre-purchase inspection report and get that information documented, written down, sent to you, not verbal, could apply equally to any of the new era cars. If it was a carbon ceramic brake car, you would then just be asking for a condition about carbon ceramic brakes and a car that has real-time misfire monitor available, you'd be asking for a misfire status. Obviously you can't get that on Classic Vanquish because Classic Vanquish doesn't have a real-time misfire monitor. I think that's a pretty neat way of doing it. And no one's trying to catch anyone out here. We wouldn't be trying to trip up any garage and identify their report as being deficient compared to our report on a car. This is just simple, transparent, straightforward, matter of fact, way of trying to document that a car has got no hidden problems that's going to catch you out shortly into ownership. Of course, if the purchase price of a particular car was well below market value and that gives you some room for repairs and evolution, then there's no problem. The level of checking pre-purchase needn't be as thorough. But on any car that's at the top end of the bracket for its particular age, mileage and the model, they really do need checking out well. If a good condition on the surface, non-S was trading for about 70K, yet it needed ASM pump, ASM pack, clutch, evolution to mag gear position sensor, then that's easily 15 grand's worth of repair work. If it needs new brakes, tires are pretty worn out, some other common Vanquish repair stroke service items, maybe it needs front and rear subframes looking at, then your cost to put that Vanquish on the straight and narrow added to your purchase price puts you over a good Vanquish S. Whether it's classic Vanquish or the modern era cars, I see too many people getting caught out in exactly that situation, which is what we're trying to avoid going through the process of pre-purchase inspections and making sure that the car is good 
at point of purchase. Hope you like that question of the week. It'll be really interesting if we can get this process going, where instead of going out to do a pre-purchase inspection, we get the vendor to do their pre-purchase inspection, and then let's see if our post-purchase inspection marries up. As always, it really helps us if you can click us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we look forward to seeing you on the next question of the week.